Phil, uh, first and foremost, I know you're playing hurt today because you stayed up all night long to watch the Steelers Cowboys game. Uh, I, did. I did not because, you know, it's strict bedtime at some point for me. I, I can't be doing an hour and a half thunderstorm delay and then getting to bed at 1 a.m. But uh, on the other hand, uh, I didn't go to bed angry, whereas yeah. you probably did. And, and before Phil uh, responds, Phil, I did not stay up either because I could care less. <laughs> <laughs> You're smarter than we are. You're smarter than we are, Bill. Well, I stayed up. It was mad, and I'm over it. Rob is going to be mad the rest of the day, but Bill is smarter than both of us. He doesn't care, and that, that's that's the way we should be, Rob, because I'm, I'm afraid. I've been stewing on this. And I talked to uh, – I apologize if my phone goes out. I'm, I'm running behind today because I was up all night. But um, the that offense, man, it just it seems like it's just the same old thing. I think if you hold someone to 20 points, you should win. Well, I would agree. It looks like the defense, which let them down last week, had a chance to get a stop at the end of the game last night and failed. Uh, uh, Phil, have you ever remember a year where three freshmen – rookie quarterbacks are doing so well and turning the destination or the destiny of their teams. I'm no, thinking about no. Broncos, the uh, the Bears, and the uh, the Commanders. Yeah, and Commanders and Bears in particular. I think uh, the Broncos quarterback is just kind of hanging on to a good defense. But the, those other two, you know, other than, you know, Big Ben, and at that time it was an anomaly. You didn't normally see a rookie come in and play lights out like that and then then continue it but i think it it just shows like college football is a little bit different than what it used to be and these guys because of uh seven on seven and constant camps and they come into the nfl more ready than what they did in the past and those those two guys are setting the world on fire i hate to say that because i'm not a commander but those two guys are setting the world on fire i'd like to have one of those rookies I don't wish one of those rookies would land in Pittsburgh. The uh, the ability to read defenses is what makes a quarterback. Yeah. If you're drafted in the first round or two to play a quarterback in the NFL, you have the arm strength and you can make the throws. They don't they don't draft you if you can't make the throws uh, in those early rounds for the most part. Yeah, there's exceptions, but for the most part, you can make the throws in the first round. But the ability to read a defense is just what makes or breaks a quarterback. And we'll see after these quarterbacks have gone around the league a little bit if they continue what they're doing. But uh, some of them, especially the, the Jaden Daniels in uh, in Washington, is really lighting the league on fire and he's really turned that franchise around. Getting rid of Dan Snyder was yeah, uh, yeah. step one, but they, they, they may have something here. I'd add another dimension as well, and that's Daniels' ability to uh, – be maneuverable yeah but that, but that's that's almost a requirement now yeah. you you almost have to have that in your quarterback it's it's like an afterthought uh a- anymore in regards to being mobile uh phil we have to let you go early today because the secretary of state mac warner needs some time around eight fifty. so let's get right into the financials now and we had a nice friday to end the week last week but uh this morning there seems to be some concerns with the job reports too strong phil yeah, yeah, and, I, and it doesn't make any sense, the timing of, you know, pullback this morning in pre-market. And so we got the job report, and it was much better than expected. And when I first saw it on Friday, in the back of my mind, I wondered, was that too good? And what I mean by was it too good is, remember, we said we're walking a tightrope, and we needed to see a solid job report, but it also still needed to support rate cuts. But it was – almost so good that you would think like well now do they even need to cut rates look at this job report and on the back of it here comes the cpi this week and 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 that alphabet soup that we talk about so much and i know this is a tired story and there's probably listeners thinking my goodness can we talk about something else but this is what is driving the market last week was proof of that and we had all those we had israel and iran and we had the strike and and all along it, it really what really mattered to our markets was the job report, but was it too good? So now I think what what we're leading into now is the inflation readings, all three, the inflation readings would tell us whether or not there's going to be a rate cut, and the jobs report will tell us how steep that rate cut may be. And I still think it's just a matter of timing. It's going to get to where it's going to get, 
but how quickly is it going to get there and how drastic will the rate cuts be? And I think over the weekend, maybe we pondered, is this job, was that jobs report a little bit too good? If you're the Federal Reserve and the CPI comes in as expected at 2.3%, what's your motivation to cut rates right now? If the CPI is at 2.3, jobs is strong, and remember, that's their two mandates, inflation and employment, why would you cut rates? So now there's a bigger possibility that there's no rate cuts at the next meeting than there is a 50 basis point rate cut. Now, still, mainly, it's probably going to be a quarter of a percent, but those are the odds right now. Is you know Between those three, no rate cut, quarter of a percent, and 50. Odds on favor, it's a quarter of a percent, but it's more likely that we get no rate cut than we get a 50 basis point rate cut. The 10-year Treasury ticked back above 4%. Uh, Phil, and when I last looked at it, it was at 4.016% and rising was at 4.005% in the 6 a.m. hour. Uh, Explain to us if a 4% treasury is a concern in regards to interest rates and what it does for borrowing and business. Right now, the 4% yield that we, or the treasury that we have right now, and I think you're talking about the 10-year Yes, um, the ten year, which which would be the which would be the big the biggest indicator of them all, I think, at the moment. But th- it's still within the ebbs and flows of where it should be, and so it's not a concern yet. But if it gets back up to that four point one five, four point two, then it is a concern. And really, what it's doing, what that Treasury is doing, is future bets kind of on what the Federal Reserve is going to do. So, you know, you look at it from the standpoint of what's in your portfolio. Let's boil it down to what's in your portfolio. Well, if you, you have bonds, most people do, have some sort of bond exposure in their portfolio. And as those Treasury yields go up, you'll look at them on the ticker and say, hey, it's green. That must be good. It's not. You want the Treasury yield to be red for existing bonds. So if bond yields are falling, your current bond prices are going up. So what's in your portfolio is going up. And the reverse, if it's green, your current bond prices or what's in your portfolio is going down. So you want to see the reverse when you look at uh, when you look at debt in your portfolio. But that's what that is. What's happening over the weekend? And I guess we started to really dig into that jobs report more. It should have happened on Friday. You know, in my humble opinion, if it's going to happen, if we were going to question that jobs report and what it could do for future rate increases, it should have happened Friday. Why overnight? But I, I guess if you look at where that was, and if you were the Federal Reserve, if you put yourself in Jerome Powell's shoes, if we get that expected 2.3% on the CPI, what's your motivation to continue to cut rates? And, and will that boost the, the possibility of no rate cuts at the next meeting? Well, that's a great question. And it's one that I was asking myself when I saw that jobs number. What would be your incentive to cut rates now other than for the sake of cutting rates, right? Yeah, I mean, it, in in a vacuum, and I and I know, and we'll, we'll say like how they measure the economy, and on on the street, it, it doesn't feel that way. And if John were here, he, we'd be talking about, you know, just because inflation has slowed doesn't mean it's not there. It just means prices are going up slower, so it still does hurt at the grocery store and when we're traveling and when we're purchasing things. It costs much more to live now than it did a few years back. But it has slowed to the point that they want it to slow. So if that's the mandate, if he said, hey, this is your job, make sure that this is okay and that's okay. If they're both okay, then why would you make a, make a move? Now, it's still, I still anticipate that they would do a quarter of a percent, even if that CPI comes at 2.3, because the moves that they make won't take shape until three to six months. It won't make an impact in our economy for three to six months out. So they are. This is kind of a prediction from the Federal Reserve. So I still think that they'll move in advance of those numbers getting there and be precautionary on the way down instead of reactionary. So you have the ten-year going up above four percent, and now you have oil, which earlier this morning was above seventy-six dollars a barrel again. It's settled back down around seventy-five and a half at the moment. And I see gas prices along Edwin Miller Boulevard have gone back up into the mid three twenties range, Phil, which. Uh, it, I don't think that spooks us completely, but the direction it's yeah. moved over the last couple of weeks, it's uh, it's gone from the low threes. I think it was 3.029 uh, on Edwin Miller Boulevard two weeks ago, now up to 3.259. That's the wrong direction. 
And if, if the Middle East situation continues, could we end up seeing $80 a barrel oil again soon? Yeah, and if it gets above, if, if it's around 80 that's still the place where we'll complain, and but not it won't change us too much. We get uncomfortable when it gets above that, and that is an inflationary pressure. So throw this all into what we what we keep talking about and keep circling back to the Federal Reserve. But if oil prices keep going up and the, and the transportation costs keep going up, that's an inflationary pressure. So can you cut rates a quarter of a percent or half a percent? And and knowing that you've got inflationary pressures coming up now, they, there are there's those multiple readings where they look at inflation with and without. Uh, the the cost of energy and of course oil is energy so you know which one will they focus more on because energy is so fluid it goes up and down so quickly and some of it is out of our control altogether so that they decided not to put that much emphasis on it I think in this scenario because it was a problem in the past they have to pay attention to that and there is it looks like there's no uh, immediate end to the Israel and Iran issue which is causing this spike in oil prices all right, Phil, how do we reach you for more information today? Should we have questions? You, unless you want to talk about football, you can reach us at 304-263-4343 or stop by and see us at 1270 Winchester Avenue right here in Martinsburg. Who do the Steelers play next week, Phil? Do you know? They have the Raiders, which has a history of beating the Steelers. So we're probably looking at three and three. <laughs> Dude, you jump off a bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty darn fast. I'm still on and I'm just mad. I'm still <laughs> oh, man, that's financial. Phil there.